Hey guys, Trey back again with another video. And in today's video, I want to show you guys how you can use a, a actual database to store user credentials. So I know in previous projects, I, uh, you know, I faked this and used a bunch of different methods, uh, like files and just other things. But um, in a production app, you probably want to be using a database and you want to uh, store these credentials. Um, you know, here in 2022, you probably shouldn't be doing this at all anyway. You might as well outsource this to basically another. If you're going to be doing production, you might as well outsource this this login stuff to, you know, I think Google has Google Authenticator or something like that. There's other options out there where you don't have to really worry about the authentication. I, I um, you know, if you're like a startup or whatever, or if you're just, you're just building a production app, I feel like you should uh, do that. That way you can take the pressure off your shoulders of actually keeping people's data safe. So, um, but you know, if you're just working on a project, you want to know how it works behind the scenes, we can go ahead and do that today. And I'll show you guys how to do that. We, um, will be, uh, storing a username and a password and some other user data. Um, we are going to be using Argon two to hash the password that we store. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be pretty simple. Other than that, I'm probably going to break this video into a couple of parts, uh, because might be a little long if I don't. So today's video, we're going to just start off by setting up everything, um, getting our database in place and getting the uh, express server up and ready to go. All right. So the first thing you'll need to do is install a database of some sort. I'm going to be using MySQL. Um, I already have a video of how to install MySQL on Linux. Um, if you don't know how to uh, install MySQL, you can go ahead and go check that video out. Um, because I'm going to skip that part and I'm going to actually just go into creating the actual tables and everything. Once you um, check out that video, get MySQL installed, then you can um, log into your MySQL instance. So um, once you get it up and running, let me show you how to do that on Linux. What you would do is you would type MySQL dash U and then you would put your user in. I'm just going to say root um, and then you would type dash P and then hit enter. And when you do that, it'll ask you to um, put in your password. Once you put in your password, you will be logged in. If you're on windows, you just go to your uh, start menu You type in MySQL, and then you're going to be looking for this MySQL uh, command line client. So I already have that open and I'm already logged in. Um, yep. So once you log in, you'll be on this prompt right here, right? So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to, I'm going to post these uh, commands down in the description. You can go down there, copy and paste all of these and you'll just paste it into your command line client. All right. So once you do that, uh, for that last command, you're going to have to hit enter. Okay. So just make sure you hit enter so you can get that last one out the way. All right. So I'm going to go here and explain what we just did. So we created a database called auth all right this is going to be our auth database and then um we created a table in that database and it's going to be called user and it's going to have an id a username first name and last name so this is basically your user data the user information that you want to store um you can create a table put whatever information you want to store about the user emails um address whatever you want to store about the user just put it in this table okay and then we're going to create another table called user auth. So this user auth table is going to hold the, uh, the person's username. Basically, it's going to be the ID that we're going to use. And then we'll store their password, but we're going to store this password as a hashed password. OK, and then we're going to have if this account is active or not. OK, so basically this is like a Boolean value. Um, but in uh, MySQL, they don't have Boolean. So we're just going to use this tiny int and just store zero or one, depending on if it's uh there or not uh, we also add a foreign key to this username so basically this ties this table to the user table okay so this username is the exact same as this username so you can't put anything into this table unless it's already exists in this table okay so that's what the foreign key does so it's going to make sure that hey if it doesn't exist in this table you won't be able to put it in this table all right so cool. After that, um, we create an actual user. This user will have access to this database and be able to do whatever they want on this database. 
okay so that's what we're doing here so we create the user and we grant all of the privileges to that user okay um and then we flush the privileges so that the user can do whatever they need to do all right um make sure you make a secure password for this user and you can name this user whatever you want i'm just you know this is just a test so i'm using this stuff right here all right so you just copy paste that into your command line client or if you're on linux just into the terminal and you will be ready to go all your tables will be set up and you'll be ready to do what we have to do all right so once we get that done we need to go into our vs code or whatever your ide is and we can go ahead and start creating the application once we get in here you can uh, pick whatever directory you want to make your uh, application in and then if you're on linux i'm going to show you how to get to where we are now you just type in mkdir and then you type in the name of your folder, whatever you want the name of your application to be. You just type it in there, hit enter. And once you do that, you're going to type CD and then the name of your application. And then hit enter. And then now you're going to be inside of that folder. Once you get inside of that folder, you're going to want to type git init and then hit enter. And that's going to set up your repository to be a git repository. That way you can um, do your version control and everything there if you want to uh, push anything up to git. All right. You can do it that way. And then also um, you're going to want to type in npm init y all right and then you're going to get this package.json file so if you're doing this exactly the way i said you won't have this license file you won't have this dot get ignore file okay and don't worry about that this is for me because i'm going to be pushing this to my github um you don't really need that um so don't worry about that. As long as you have this package.json after typing in npm init dash y, then you're good to go. Okay. You only need that one file. All right. So next we're going to um, install some packages because now we have npm set up in this uh, directory. So we're going to go ahead and install some npm packages. All right. So what we're going to type in to install these packages npm i dash capital S. And then we're going to say ex express and then we're going to do cores we're going to do my sql2 then we're going to do dot env and last but not least argon2 all right hit enter so what this is doing is installing our packages so we have express um express is basically what we're going to use to set up our endpoints and um you know it's going to be our server pretty much this is what's going to handle all of that all right, then we have cores here. This is going to allow us to um, access our endpoints from a browser. Okay, so that's what we're going to use that for. Then we have MySQL2. This is basically going to allow us to um, talk to our database. So we're going to be able to uh, uh, interface with our database and make uh, calls to query our um, database for information and also store information in the database. All right, then we have this dot env here. This is going to be used to um, set up our environment variables. So when we move uh, from a development environment to a production environment, we're going to have different environment variables because we, we might have a different, you know, actual production database that we want to connect to instead of our dev database. And there are a bunch of other things you could add in here. Um, and this is basically keep sensitive data outside of your source code. So if you do push to get and you have like a, a public repo or something, nobody knows what your exact, uh, you know, credentials or anything like that is and your sensitive data will go in here. All right. And then we have Argon2, which is this is the algorithm that we're going to use the hashing algorithm for our passwords, because you do not want to store passwords in plain text in a database. That is a no, no. So we're going to use Argon2. I did a little bit of research um, in 2022. Everybody's saying Argon2 is the way to go. Um, if you are into cryptography, which I am not, please in the comments down below, let us know why or even if this is the right algorithm to use. OK, so um, I will be going with that today. And that is it. So now we have everything installed. The next thing we want to do is to uh, go ahead and we will uh, create our server file. So this is basically our where our express server is going to run. All right, so we're going to create a file. I'm gonna call the file server.js. Um, I'm gonna do this through the uh, command line, but you can do it up here. Just hit the little plus and then name your file and everything. But I'm gonna do everything from the command line because I prefer to do it that way. 
So now we have this file here, server.js, and then you're going to want to set up a basic express server, okay? So um, if you don't know how to do that, you can go to Google and just figure it out. It's not difficult. There are millions of those pages showing you how to set up a express server. So what I'm going to do is I have a package installed on VS Code that allows me to uh, use a snippet to set everything up. So I'm going to do it that way. I'm going to erase this. And then I'm going to erase this. We don't need that. All right. And then what I'm going to do is we want to set up a port, right? So the port is going to be uh, where the express app runs. So it's going to run on a specific port on your computer. So I don't want to put the port inside of my source code. So what I'm going to do is use that env file that I was telling you about when we installed those packages. And that's where I'm going to store the port number. Okay. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to create a new file and we're going to call it env. So we're going to say touch and we're going to actually put a dot here and then we're going to say env. All right. So now we have a dot env file up here and I'm going to click on that. So this dot env file is going to hold all of our sensitive information. So I'm going to say port and I'm going to set the port to 3000. Okay. So this is basically setting up our port. And then we're going to use this port inside of our server.js. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to import that package. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say require, and then we're going to say dot env, and then I'm going to do config. All right, I'm call a config method on that. So this is basically going to set up our uh, server to be able to access these values. Okay. So once we do that, we need to actually pull that value in. And we'll do that um, above our app here. So we're going to say const, and then we'll do capital uh, port, and then we'll do process.env.port. Okay. So this is where we're actually pulling that value out of this file here. So that's actually the code that's pulling that out and going to uh, replace this part with our 3000. Okay. So that's what that's doing. And now we want to replace these ports with the new port that we just put. So we're going to put port here. We're going to uh, change these uh, double quotes out and we're going to put back ticks. And then right here, we're going to say port. All right. So we have um, example app listening on port and then it'll replace this with 3000 and also we'll listen on port 3000 here so now if you like move this code to a different server and something's already running on port 3000 what you can do is just create a new env file on that server and change this to another port like 3001 and you don't have to touch your code okay you just change that env file and when you run it it'll change it change the port all right so we're good with that the next thing we want to do is actually set up um, our endpoints. So right now we don't have any endpoints on this server. So the server really doesn't do anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up endpoints. And this is where our endpoints are going to um, allow us to register a user. And it's also going to allow us to uh, allow users to log in. So we're going to have two endpoints. Okay. And we're going to do this in a separate file just to, you know, separate this out and it would be easier for you to see as I'm doing it and you won't get confused with what's express and what's the actual other code. So what we're going to do is create a new file. So I'm going to say touch and then I'm going to call this one auth.js. All right. So we have auth.js here. And this file is um, where we're going to do our endpoints. But first, I want to go ahead and import that file. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to say require and I, I'm going to require that off.js file. So I'm just going to call it off and then we hit enter and there we go. So this is going to be this file right here. So um, I think we might need to say dot slash off. Let me try that. So we're going to do uh, dot slash off. All right. And that's going to tell it, hey, this is the file we want right here. And now let's go ahead and go to our off.js file and we're going to set up our express router here. So what we're going to do here is we're going to require express. 
right? And then after that, we're going to need to set up our router. So we're going to say const router equals express dot router. All right. And then down here at the bottom, what we're going to do is we're going to say module dot export and then equals router. So that's going to be able to take our router and allow it to be used in other files like we did here when we imported. And then let's go back to our server.js. Now that we actually have a router, let's go ahead and go down here. And then we're going to say app before, make sure it's before the um, app.listen. We're going to say app.use. And then we'll do slash. And then we're going to uh, do auth right here. Okay. So this is basically going to say, hey, if anybody goes to this slash directory on this server, use the auth router which is in here so let's do a test endpoint so we're going to say router dot git and then we'll do slash hello and then we're going to do the request the response and then inside of here we're just going to say res dot send and then we will just send hello, oh, put this in quotes, hello world. And we'll do a exclamation, why not? All right, so let's test this out to make sure this works. So the way we do this is make sure you're in your root folder here where the server.js file is. And then we're gonna type in node server.js. All right, it says the app is listening. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open a new terminal and then we're gonna do a curl. So what we're going to do is we're going to say curl and then we're going to do HTTP colon slash slash local host. We're going to go 3000 slash hello. And there we go. You see, we get hello world back. So that works just fine. And yep, we're set up and we're ready to go to set up our endpoints. We're not going to do that in this video because this video is already getting long enough. So like and subscribe to the channel and all that jazz and I will see you guys in the next video.